Daniels started with his brioche mixture, which he'll be baking in cylindrical molds for about half an hour. Richard's preparing his mead jelly, and he knows he'll have to raise his game today if he's to have any chance of cooking at the banquet. Daniel, yeah. don't take this the wrong way. The brioche don't seem very English to me. Yeah, but it's a part of the uh, dish. I wanted something a little bit sweeter than normal don't you think you dry might be, bread. Don't you think you might have just been easier just to call it a sweetened bread? <laughs> it is what it is. Richard's getting ready for some seriously hard work. His best chance of getting through to tomorrow is to beat his nearest rival, Will, any way he can with his thoroughly retro rhubarb and junket dish. I haven't seen that on a menu since I started cooking. I think it's, it's going back to basics, isn't it? I think after the way the week's been so far, I think it's a bit time to maybe pull it back a bit, go for that yum-yum factor. Richard's beginning by making an oat crumb from flour, dark brown sugar, salt and oats, which he'll bake for 25 minutes. Is it going to be simple, like he said? I don't know, because there's been a twist every day this week. He had marshmallows on his starter. What's he going to put, canapes on his dessert? I'm not sure. Will's trying not to worry about Richard. But they're both using honeys that they source near their historic properties, so there's a real possibility that one might taste much better than the other. Using a flavoured honey like a, a lavender or a heather honey can be quite difficult to get the balance with the dish. Will it overpower the rhubarb? Will it overpower the custard? I mean, I think one of them's going to be a little bit heavy-handed and put a bit too much in, so let's see who cracks under the pressure. What are you going to do with the honey in your dish? What are you... Uh... I'm, I'm flavouring the junket with it. OK. And then this is wild honey, and you'll get a real pack off that. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Have a go on this. This is my Heather Honey from Derbyshire. You like it? Yeah, that's really nice. Do you want to borrow some for uh, your... Oh, when I said it's nice, it's not that nice. <laughs> not yeah. that nice. <laughs> Feeling good. I'm really confident with my dessert. I'm just letting the ingredients sing. Just letting, you know, exactly what the brief of the whole competition's about. But Will and Daniel both have an ingredient in common as well, elderflower. In fact, it's the third day running that it's happened. They both used trout for their fish course and lamb yesterday. I think Will's been stalking me. I'm, I'm going to tell you honest with you, we've got the same ingredients near enough all the way through. But the end of the day is we're both in tune with, with our area, but we're also in tune in what's in season. Will's using elderflower cordial, though, while Daniel's gone for the dried variety. But Richard's using flowers in his dessert, too. So, Rich, lavender. Yeah, you've got, to be, you've got to be careful with lavender in cooking, though, don't you think? Yeah, because it tastes like soap. Yeah. Because that would be the last comment you need this week. Is your dish taste like soap? Daniel seems bent on causing mischief all round. Will thinks his honey's better than yours. That's gorgeous. Yeah, just subtle. Fantastic. A retired doctor, and he, he's got bees kind of... I've got a wild flower one as well. Has he produced enough, just in case you get through? Yeah, yeah, no, we've already spoken. <laughs> OK.